Well, praise the Lord, another get together and uh, just enjoying God's goodness. I hope your day is blessed. I appreciate him. Glad he woke me up this morning and started me on my way, set my feet on a solid rock. And I know I can trust him to keep me there. And so uh, we just have some thoughts to share with you. Thanks for stopping by our uh, channel. And I hope the word of God would be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. The urgency of the spirit of God is still uh, flowing in the direction of end time events and the planned end time worldwide harvest and revival. And uh, I hope you're gonna be a part of that. I told the Lord I want to be smack in the middle of whatever it is that he's doing. And uh, by his grace, we're going to pursue uh, pursue him to that end. And uh, in the meantime, we occupy. And Paul made a statement. He said, the night is far spent and the day is at hand. And it's high time that we awake out of sleep. Uh, so thank you for being awake with me. And uh, I pray that you have a, a hunger and a thirst for him that far surpasses anything that you've ever uh, encountered and hungered for in life. I know what it's like to uh, live on the other side of this and be consumed with, uh, as Paul wrote in Ephesians 1, uh, walking in the lust of my flesh and the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Uh, by nature, uh, I was not. Uh, a child of God, a son of God. Uh, but thank the Lord that he has brought me, kept me, preserved me. And I'm praying that he keeps my whole spirit, uh, soul and body blameless, preserves it until he returns. Praise God. Scripture says he's faithful. He'll do it. And uh, I hope that's your desire today. You know, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We so desperately need a clear voice, a clear channel of the word of God being proclaimed in this hour. Uh, I feel it's the only way that it's going to uh, fight the, the deception, the seducing spirits, the false prophets, uh, etc., etc. That is... Uh, present with this age, which the Bible has clearly prophesied uh, was going to take place. And that should be our, our desire is every day to get uh, a portion of the word, some word. David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And uh, I think it's the only way you and I are really going to have that anchor of the soul uh, is to have the Word of God and stand on the Word of God no matter what. Uh, keep in mind that we only give account to God. Now, I understand in the natural realm of things, there is structure in place, a structure that is fitting. Uh, I know uh, if you are a believer in uh, apostolic authority, then you should have uh, someone in your life that is your oversight, uh, that can say no to you, um, that you are accountable to. And uh, the only way that you can exercise the authority of God is to be submitted to the authority that God has placed in your life. Uh, of course, as long as that authority in your life uh, is in line with God's word. Um, there's a danger I believe the deeper that we get into these end times, uh, <clears throat> there's some crazy stuff going on. I don't have to elaborate. It's it's there. You see it there. Uh, if you have any sensitivity to the spirit, you know it's there. You can sense that it's there. Uh, there's a lot of things that, uh, that are taking place. There's a lot of voices that are taking place. And... Um, I want to turn your attention, if you want to grab your Bible, to Hebrews chapter 2, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 4. While you're getting there, uh, I just want to thank those of you that uh, share our video with others, those that have subscribed to our channel, 
And uh, my only desire is to not elevate me. My only desire is that God uses this platform to speak to his people or to whomever, something that somebody can stumble upon, uh, something that somebody can be fed by. <clears throat> That's my only concern. And uh, I want to thank you for being a part of us. Uh, we're located in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, and uh, been there for uh, 20 years, and thankful that uh, the Lord has kept us up to this point. Praise God. Don't know what the future is going to bring or hold, but uh, I just appreciate his faithfulness. Amen. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Therefore, we ought to give, notice the wording that the writer uses, Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. In other words, my dad used to say to me at times, and my mom, you know, when I wouldn't listen to them, the instructions that they would give, they would use the phrase about it going in one ear and out the other. Of course, that's not true, but in the sense it, uh, it, it was ignoring what they said for me to do or not paying attention uh, to what they told me to do. Uh, and therefore, I was not aware of the consequences of not doing what they told me to do. And there was a price to, to, to be paid. And the writer of Hebrews is letting these believers know that um, as we see that day approaching, there needs to be a, a, an earnest of heeding the things that they uh, had been taught. You know as well as I do that if you've been uh, in this way for any length of time, there are uh, varied opinions about things. There are varied interpretations about things. And uh, I believe we all should be persuaded. Um, and I believe that the Lord responds to those that do uh, seek after him. Uh, those that have a hunger and thirst for him, the Lord will respond to that. And he has the ability to uh, impart to us uh, revelation and impart to us um, the activation of his spirit to whatever purpose that uh, he has called us to be in this hour. And um, I'm thankful that Philippians 1 and 6 says that he will finish the work that he started in us, that we can be confident of that. And uh, we should wake up every day with the confidence that God is on my side, that God has a plan. God has chosen me to be a part of that plan. Uh, as one place says, I have been washed, I have been sanctified, I have been justified in the name of the Lord and uh, we should be able to walk the straight line that he has commanded us to walk uh, with the understanding that if we're not careful, um, as you know, no doubt, individuals that once walked in this way and no longer walk in this way, um, usually you can tell when somebody really has what the scripture teaches relative to the faith. Uh, as I've talked about in the past, contending for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. The writer of Hebrews is saying that there needs to be a, a, an earnest about us relative to um, uh, taking inventory of ourselves. Those that are mature in the faith, they don't look how should I say it? They don't look all the time to have some type of confirmation on whether they're in the faith or not. Uh, we can come to a place where we know, but we know, but we know. And the reason why we know is not based on opinion, not necessarily even experience, but we base it on the character of God and the word of God. The scripture tells us that in these last days, they're going to change the truth or attempt to change the truth, and they will succeed in turning this truth to a fable or a fairy tale with those that are not anchored in the faith. Um, 
They will give uh, heed to seducing spirits. They will uh, reveal the doctrine of devils, and people will believe that. Um, they will not endure sound doctrine, sound teaching based on the scripture, because it will not agree with either their lifestyle or what they feel uh, God's expectations are or are not. And so we need to be able to look at ourselves uh, in the mirror of his word, as he says, earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. And uh, as I have said, I've been walking with the Lord for over 41 years, and I have seen them come, and I have seen them go. Um, we need to understand that this treasure that God has placed in this earthen vessel, um, if we're not careful, uh, we can allow it to slip. And interestingly, that word slip, according to the Complete Word Study Bible, says figuratively to slip away, suggesting a gradual and almost unnoticed movement past a certain point. Uh, gives the analogy or the imagery of a, a ship tied to a dock and uh, the rope that tied that ship to the dock wasn't secured tight enough and with the wind and the, the waves the boat going up and down it slowly uh, undid that knot that wasn't put on there correctly and the boat drifted away from shore uh, so that wording that the writer uses uh, should give pause to you and I. There are some people that um, just feel comfortable uh, where they're at. Uh, they don't want to change. They don't want to go deeper. They just feel, all, all right, I've done the prerequisites, and therefore uh, I'm good, I'm good. Not realizing, even in the natural, um, if you know who Paul Simon is, Paul Simon was uh, part of the, the Simon and Garfunkel duo. Uh, he wrote a song, Slip Sliding Away. And uh, for those of you that might be in my age bracket, you, you may remember it. But the first um, chorus or whatever, the first verses, if I can say it that way, uh, in it he mentions, you know, you know the nearer your destination the more you're slip sliding away. And uh, I began to think about that. And, and, you know, just like anything in life, when we are in the beginning of, of tackling something, when we're in the beginning of trying to reach a certain goal, uh, we're full of energy, we're on guard, so to speak, where there's an awareness of what we need to do, how we need to do it. And uh, as we put the building blocks of that together, um, it, it's, you know, we're faithful, we're strong, we're committed. But then as everything starts to take shape and whatever goal we're trying to reach, the closer that we get to it, uh, we start to relax a bit. And I think that's just human nature um, where, you know, it's in an emergency when emotions are high and there's alarms going off. You're, you know, you're awake, you're on, you're on guard. But then once the thing, everything settles down and things get back to normal, then you, whew. and And the writer is saying that you need to be cautious that the closer we're getting to the end times, the closer we're, we're seeing the, the, um, uh, spirits of this age that are rising up and the world is in chaos and seducing spirits are running rampant and there are people that have walked with Jesus for many, many years that are walking away from the faith, individuals being easily seduced. Um, they were there in the beginning. They are recorded in the scriptures for our admonition. And uh, there needs to be an awakening, a, a moment, if you please, where we say, you know what, uh, I, I need to, I need to uh, take an inventory. You know, have I lost my first love? Uh, do I, do I uh, 
uh, read the word of God the same? Do I pray the same? Is it monotonous to me? Is, has he become common to me? Or is there still an excitement in my relationship with him? Do I have the same desire to want to be in the house of God, to want to be in fellowship with, uh, with uh, my brethren, my sisters? You know, Acts 2.42 says after the day of Pentecost that they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in uh, the breaking of bread and in prayers. There was something, friend, that when they came to the faith and the transformation power of the Holy Ghost had gotten a hold of them, they didn't care about anything else in life. And uh, at one point, they even uh, sold when they found out there was there was needs that they sold what they had, their possessions. They took the finances, they took whatever they got for the for the, what they sold and laid it at the apostles' feet so that the apostles could. Uh, divvy it up and give to those that were in need. Uh, very, very far for the, from the most part of most churches in the time that we're living in, uh, the, the busyness of life in this hour, um, the, the you know lack of time, I don't have time, and uh, the, the pressure, it seems, of, of end time events and the pressure of family and the pressure of economics and uh, you know, you add add church services into that. A time to read the Bible, need time to pray, and it's just it can be it can be a whirlwind. However, I don't believe in the age that the apostles in the first century church was born that the busyness of life, the lifestyle, may have been different, but the busyness of life was still the same. It's always been still the same. It's all applicable to our human existence. We find time to do the things that we want to do. We find time to do the things that we enjoy. And walking with the Lord Jesus Christ in this, in this hour takes work. It does, it takes work. None of us are gonna float our way into heaven. And there needs to be an, an awareness of, of the footing that we're on, of the path that we're on, of what's going on around us, a sensitivity to his voice. And uh, I'll continue reading Hebrews chapter 2. Let me read verse 1 again. Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the words spoken by angels were steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape? Notice it compares to God's judgment to others, to individuals starting in heaven when the rebellion was in heaven. And Satan and a third of the angels were cast down from heaven because of that rebellion. And multitudes of scriptures under the old covenant and also some in the new of what's taken place, what has taken place, what is going to take place. And the writer is saying, if the word of God is true in that case, and you see what took place by those who disobeyed the Lord to those who went astray, then how much more, how shall you and I in this time period escape if we neglect so great salvation? Let me ask you, is your salvation just kind of there? Oh, um, I have repented of my sins. I was baptized in Jesus' name on March 13th, 1982. I received the Holy Ghost the next day at church on March 14th, Sunday night, 1982. I'm saved. I've been to hundreds of thousands of church services. I've read the Bible book to cover time and time again, etc., etc., etc. It can easily become a common way of life. But read the admonition the Lord gave to the seven churches of Asia. And it proves to us that Sometimes, you know, we think we're on that right course or we think we've arrived to a certain level or a certain degree. And I'm finding out, friend, that there is more of him 
a lot more of him. There's a lot more that he wants to do in us, by us, through us. And I've got to be careful, and, and I hope you will acknowledge that you've got to be careful not to allow that, that slipping away. Let me read you the definition again. <coughs> Excuse me. Suggesting a gradual and almost unnoticed movement past a certain point. There's a danger. We're walking in perilous times. Paul said it. Second Timothy 3. <coughs> Excuse me. And so the perilous time should give us warning that, hey, you know what, I, I got to be on guard. When uh, I was in the military and uh, on guard duty, they, they would teach us about listening for certain sounds. It's almost like you needed, a, if I can say it this way, a sixth sense, uh, especially if you were doing guard duty that was uh, out in the woods and the different sounds of the night a snap of a branch or, or a shuffle in, in, on a rock. And we need to have an awareness in our lives in this hour that a, a true sound is coming into our hearing, not someone's opinion, not the, the latest religious craze that's taken place. Uh, honestly, sometimes I hear stuff and it's gonna be the craziest stuff and you wanna say, what is the point? Um, <clears throat> some things are just, you're better off walking away from them. We'll <laughs> leave it at that. The Passion Translation of, uh, of verse one of Hebrews chapter two says this, this is why it is so crucial that we all the more engaged and attentive to the truths that we have heard so that we do not drift off course. And uh, you'll never know, and I will never know the word of God or even God himself to the depth that he is. And God's not going to tell you and I every a bit of answer when we pray or reasons when we pray. He will purposely leave things out because if he was to tell us uh, the fullness of uh, what we're looking for, somehow we'll want to control it. Uh, our flesh interferes with God's timing. And so our, our place with him is to occupy the moment we take a step, one step at a time. Or as the scripture says, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Walking with the Lord Jesus Christ is a joy. And there are surprises in this journey. Uh, there are ups and downs in this journey. Uh, you have to recognize that God loves you so much that he will not let you destroy yourself if you're seeking him. Uh, he will not let you for long engage in things that are going to cost you your soul, being confident that he'll finish what he started in you. And uh, I thank God for the gift of repentance I thank God for the gift of conviction of sin, and I thank God that he is a merciful God, a long-suffering God, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to that place of repentance. However, he expects you and I to do our due diligence to seek him. Why? Because he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. It is not going to come easy. It's going to come with work. It's going to come with sacrifice. It's going to come with surrender. It's going to come with submitting. You will find yourself more at an altar uh, than, than at, a, at a throne. It is crucial that we be more engaged and attentive to the truths that we know. Are you contending for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints? 
Can you substantiate with the Bible, with Scripture, why you do the things you do, how you do the things you do? Are they just religious tradition? Are they just church traditions that have been passed on from generation to generation? And we've become so used to our traditions that we can't even find them in the Bible or we don't even take the time to search for them in the scriptures. It's a question that really needs an answer. But I dare say most of us are probably afraid to look for that answer because we already know the answer. And sadly, from my perspective, uh, we have uh, shackled the hands of God from being able to freely move amongst us is because we want to manipulate. We want to be in control. We don't like not being in control. The Amplified translation of verse 1, Hebrews 2, says, Since all this is true, we ought to pay much closer attention than ever to the truths that we have heard, lest in any way we drift past them and slip away. You know, why does a person who comes to the faith by identifying with the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ through repentance, through water baptism by immersion in the name of the Lord Jesus for the forgiveness of sins, through the baptism of spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance, why would a person start that way and as time goes on drift from that uh, there's a variety of reasons. As I said, if we're going to walk with Jesus, it's going to cost us something. And there will be family members that will be against you for it. There'll be church members that will be against you for it. There'll be the world will be against you for it. Your flesh will be. I mean, so it it's constant where we need to pay close attention is my walk in line with what thus saith the word of the Lord? Because, friend, when you stand before God and the books are open, he's going to look, he's going to ask, he's going to uh, want you to acknowledge that everything you did was in line with what he was telling you to do, how he was telling you to do it, where he was telling you to do it, when he was telling you to do it. We forget that we've been bought with a price. Our life is not our own. And so in this urgent hour that we're living in where things are happening at such a rapid pace, I can't just ignore it. I can't have my head in the clouds or my head in the sand. I need to be seeking him. I need to be acknowledging him in everything that I do. I need to be searching the scriptures to see whether these things be so. I need to hear the word of God because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Uh, there are people that assume things. There are people that hold on to traditions that were passed down to them that have no biblical substantiation to them, no biblical foundation to them. And they're going to stand before God one day and have to give an account to that. Peter, in his epistle, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 12 through 13, let me read you it. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. There was a concern with Peter. No doubt false doctrine had already infiltrated the church. No doubt there were uh, wolves in sheep's clothing that had infiltrated the church, and uh, he did not want it to be not known that, hey, I'm not going to be negligent. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to sound the alarm. I'm going to stir you up by way of remembrance. And he goes on to say again, verse 12, wherefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them and be established in the present truth. That's the beauty of God's word, my friend. It's not old-fashioned. 
you know, you, you hear the phrase, oh, our, our elders, uh, they were in the brush arbors and they really preached with fire and there was conviction and the altars were full, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, it's good that we can look back to that. But let me ask you, if it was good then, why isn't it good today? You know, we have preachers in churches that uh, coddle their people. They want to be careful what they say. Uh, they don't want to offend anybody. And uh, I posted something on my Facebook page saying that the word of God that are given to those that are speaking are in a place to speak the word of God. Uh, they're either going to heaven or they're going to hell. And uh, that is at the heart of what God gives those of us that have been called into this type of ministry. That's at the heart of why he gives us what he gives us. He expects us to say it the way he wants it said. He expects us to declare it the way he wants it declared and not to hold back. And uh, if we do what we're supposed to do, then their blood will not be on our hands. If we don't do what we're supposed to do and we're afraid to declare the word of God, then their blood will be on our hands and it'll cost us our soul. That's a, that's a frightening thought. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Verse 13, Peter says, yes, I think it meet. I think it necessary as long as I'm in this tabernacle, as long as I'm in this flesh, as long as I'm alive is what he's saying, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. And that's the beauty of the word. You can hear it over and over and over again. You, you can sing about it. You can read it for yourself. There's a depth to it. Uh, I, I find myself now just reading a lot slower than what I, I used to before uh, I would read, you know, that we have the bread program. And, and I, I guess it's good that we discipline ourselves to read the word of God. It's, it's, it's important, but we've got to be careful that it just doesn't become a program that it becomes a, a part of our daily life where uh, we're just so amazed at the word. We want to, we desire the sincere milk of the word and we grow and we mature and we learn the word of God so we can take it to others and share with others what the word of God teaches. Be mature enough to, uh, as he says in, in Hebrews about, um, you know, he says, you know, you should be teachers, but you're still babies. God's word is full. God's word is quick. It's powerful. And Peter says, I'm going to keep reminding you of these things. I'm going to stir you up by, by remembering, hey, this is what the Bible says. This is what the Lord said. I was there. I saw him transfigured. I, I denied him. And, and he I, his piercing eyes the day I denied him just broke me down. Thank God I repented. Thank God he came to visit me when he was, when he had risen from the dead, just stirring up your experiences, my friend, good or bad, can serve the purpose of God. That's why all things work together for good. I don't like it. It doesn't feel good. I have to say, God, I know this is going to work together for my good. Uh, because I love you and I'm called according to your purpose and you've promised that you would empower me. You promised that you would never leave me. Help me, Father. Let my faith exceed what my natural eyes are seeing. God's got a plan for you. And everything that's against God, against morality, against goodness is coming against our faith. It's coming, it's in the workplace, it's in, in media, it's, it's all over the place. Coming against the morality of God, the word of God, the foundation that is sure, that has withstood the test of time from generation to generation, don't let it slip away. Don't let it be uh, unnoticeably sliding away from you where you lose your first love or your heart becomes cold and it, it just becomes insignificant to you. 
according to Thayer's Greek lexicon, the, the term to stir you up, the word stir, is it, it, it gives the imagery of the sea when uh, <clears throat> the water begins to get uh, agitated. And, you know, you can, if you've ever seen a, a pond or, or even a body of water where there was no wind, it's, and you, you, you hear the phrase, man, that water looks like glass. And uh, but this this is talking about when the, when the the wind starts to pick up and the the water starts and depending on how severe that wind is it can whip up those waves in no time flat and what seemed to be a a, a quiet uh, type of situation all of a sudden is this explosive water rising metaphorically it's talking about to arouse the mind to stir up the mind to render it active waking up out of sleep the devil is a master at causing people to sleep causing people to think well, I'm, I'm I got time uh, the proverbial, oh, well, once I get my life all in order, uh, then I'll come to church. Or once I get my life all straightened up, then I'll think about uh, serving God. I remember an individual that I worked with many, many years ago. I used to witness to him, you know, relentlessly. And he said to me, he said, I used to, I liked you better when you used to curse and I said, well, that's not going to happen anymore. And, and, you know, you just try to show the love of God, try to get them to, to look to the word of God. And uh, he was respectful of me. We butted heads sometimes. But I'll never forget the call that I, I came into work uh, one morning and found out that uh, this individual had uh, left a club at, I want to say, 2 a.m. in the morning and as he was driving home, a drunk driver was on the uh, driving on the wrong side of the road and, and hit him head on, killed him instantly. And uh, even sitting at the funeral at the wake, just thinking how many opportunities, how much time, how many times did he did he hear that I tried to activate his thought process about God, about his soul, about eternity. And to, to try to wrap my mind around the fact that he has spent eternity remembering that witness, remembering those uh, tracks I put in his vehicle, re remembering the witness of Jesus Christ, and he refused and rejected it. And maybe I'm speaking to you today not to forsake yourself, Stay connected to the body of Christ. Nobody's perfect. The weakest part of God that you're going to see is the people of God that surround you. That's not who you're living for, serving. Seek the Lord. He can give you grace. I mean, Jesus had Judas knowing he was going to betray him right out of the gate, but he showed kindness. He didn't uh, get in his face from what I can understand of the scriptures. When the time came, he did what he had to do. And uh, people, are, you're going to get wounded in, in churches. You're going to get wounded. You're going to have people slander you. You're going to have people talk about you. Blood-bought, supposedly sanctified saints of God uh, can be the, the ugliest and the dangerous people that you'll, you'll ever come across. It's just, just the way it is. There's wheat and there's tares. And you need to recognize that. But he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll never turn you down. He'll never turn his back to you. He'll never throw you under the bus. Remain faithful to him because he will use those instances to develop your character, to develop your, your resolve, if I can say it that way, to stir up your mind and your remembrance to say, man, I need the armor of God on. I need to, I need to clean up my shield of faith. Praise God so it can quench some of these fiery darts. Don't let it slip from you, friend, not in this hour. Find your first love again. I know God can do it. I know Jesus can breathe that into you. Right now, in Jesus' name, Father, if somebody is listening, watching right now, 
I pray in Jesus' name that the spirit of faith would lay claim to them, breathe in them their first love, and give them that opportunity, Father, to turn back to you, to retie the boat to the dock, to uh, to uh, be not weary in well-doing. In Jesus' name, closing this afternoon or tonight or whenever you're watching this, it happens to be, oh, almost 4.30 where I'm at right now. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 11 and 12, the writer said, Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. These were born-again people in the church that the writer felt there were some other things that needed to be said to them. They were hard things to say, but they could not be said because these individuals were dull of hearing. They were not able to comprehend. I was thinking about that yesterday in Matthew 13 when uh, Jesus, the disciples, asked him about uh, speaking in parables. And he, uh, he said to them, you know, unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom, but unto them it is not given. And it, it was like, can you imagine that, that they had no interest of really knowing what Jesus was all about. All they wanted was to, to be pacified with food or their bodies healed. There was, there was no other reason for them to pursue Jesus other than to get something that they wanted. And therefore that their understanding, his understanding was kept from them. It was hidden. He goes on to say, lest I heal you. Your neck is stiff, you have eyes to see, but you don't see, you have ears to hear, but you don't hear, and uh, that's a dangerous, dangerous place to be, because when this slips from you unnoticeably, where you don't even know it's gone, it just becomes common, the church becomes common, you hear about prayer, and you're prayer turns to mechanical words read off of a page kind of common. Uh, you stop praying in the Holy Ghost because the, the sensitivity is gone. It just, it just mushrooms. And then he says in verse 12, for when the, for the time you ought to be teachers. Now, listen to me. He's not talking to the clergy. He's not talking to bishops and deacons and elders in the church, people that today's church world says, well, that's their responsibility. The pastor's responsibility to build the church. This is the pastor's responsibility to save souls, to be the teacher and, and to feed the flock. You know, I can give you scripture for that. He's not writing to just those individuals. He's writing to believers, to everyone that was filled with the Spirit washed in the blood, claimed to be a child of God. They were not doing anything with what God gave them. And if you happen to be just a, a church attender and you're not allowing the Lord to transform you and develop you into an individual that he can use in whatever capacity that he chooses, then listen to these words. For when the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. I think it's in the book of Colossians where it talks about set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. And it mentions about, um, <coughs> we'll teach about baptisms. We'll teach about repentance. We'll teach the basics if that is required, but we've got to move on from that. We've got to step up from that. The time comes where you've got to take your diaper off and put on your big boys or big girls clothing and go forth and be used of God. That's why you and I are called into the kingdom for such a time as this. It's an all hands on deck uh, clarion cry that's coming forth from heaven. 
I'm about to pour my spirit out upon all flesh. I need Bible study teachers. I need people in the streets. I need people in the store. I need people in my house. It's all hands on deck. And you and I have to decide, am I going to be a part of what God is going to do in these end times? Or am I going to be left behind? For when the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. People that do not uh, live on off of a healthy diet, uh, they're usually weak, uh, they're they're. Uh, limbs are weak, their muscular structure is weak, uh, their minds are weak, and uh, if they're not uh, eating balanced uh, nourishment, uh, it's very easy to get worn down, uh, tired all the time, and in the spirit realm, it's the same way. Desire the sincere milk of the word Allow the Holy Ghost to give the increase to that milk as you apply it to your life. Um, it goes on in this chapter, I believe. It comes to a place where it talks about the exercising of, of the senses. Those mature individual have exercised their senses by reason of use. And in this hour of deception with things coming uh uh, doctrines of devils are rampant. Uh, denying the truth and faith are rampant. People are looking for something to be tickled with rather than to, to hear the purity of word and allow the, the quickening of the scriptures to cut some of the stuff out that needs to be cut out. Uh, they're just being pacified. Uh, they, don't, they don't eat meat. They're still living on milk. Uh, and those kind of believers always find uh, reasons to complain, always questioning God for the reasons why, always have to depend on, on others to, to pick them up, etc., etc., etc. And uh, I guess that's all good in its due time and its fitting moments. We all have to be picked up now and then. We all need a word of encouragement now and then. But if it's something that just continues and continues and you're so dull of hearing that you don't know the difference, then maybe you need to reconsider your foundation and take a look at your footing and see just how shifting that footing may be in this hour. If you're afraid of what's taken place, if you're concerned about what's taken place, if you're worried about what's taken place, look at your footing. Look at your foundation. What is slipping away? If you're always questioning the reasons why, look at your footing. Is he still the anchor of your soul? Are you looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith? Are you laying aside every weight and, and the, the sin that does so easily beset you? Uh, this great cloud of witnesses, if they were to reveal themselves to you, what would they be saying? Where's your footing? Where's your faith? Where's your confidence in the, in the God who said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you? We don't see the miraculous as much as we do is because we're trying always to figure things out and we're comfortable with doing things our way. We regulate our services, the same service over and over and over again. Uh, if we have a move of God, we have the audacity to say God disrupted our service. Really? He should be disrupting the very moment we walk through the door, if I can say it that way. And, and he's the one that should be saying what he wants done, how he wants it done, when he wants it done. Oh, Lord Jesus, if only the control, we could just release the control and let you be God. I pray in Jesus' name, Father. Let this word be a lamp unto somebody's feet. Let this word be a light unto somebody's path. Your word is a, uh, an instructor, my God, and I pray that it would not return 
back to you void, but would accomplish that which you have ordained it to be. I pray faith to the hearer. I pray strength to the hungry. I pray satisfaction and refreshing to the thirsty. And I pray in Jesus' name that your name would be sanctified, glorified, magnified through it all. Amen and amen. God bless you until the next time. Keep the faith in Jesus' name.